Okay, so I'm here with uh, Nick and Kev, the organisers of the Weekend Truth Festival. Guys, how do you think the festival went? I think it's gone brilliantly. Um, we, we had a traumatic start to it, to it, getting to the tent up, etc. And we were literally building the steps to the back of the stage with 10 minutes to go. So it literally was a massive team effort. The, the boys and girls that are helping in the Truth team have been amazing. And, uh, and everything's gone to plan pretty much, except for a little power cut. But, but we're good, all good and really enjoyable. It and it's fantastic. And nature as well, it's been raining for yeah, most of the weekend. Yeah, we've had a monsoon mid, during the middle of uh, Matt Letizia's uh, speech. Um, the tent was getting hit by about, four, well, I don't know, thousands of gallons of water. And uh, yeah, and it survived it, which I was pleasantly happy, happy with. Yeah. yeah, and what did you think about the speakers this weekend and the information that they're putting out? Yeah, I think it's, I, I think we've I'm not going to blow our own trumpet or anything, but I think we picked the right sort of order and it, it sort of uh, lifted everybody up towards the end of the day and everybody's come out buzzing. Yeah, it's been the right balance because I think what I'm hearing from people all, all the way through the whole three days is that the energy is so high. Uh, even Sky News came up to me and said, you know, oh, it's the producer actually, she said, I can't believe how friendly everyone is, the vibe's really high and that's sort of like music to your ears, especially after all the planning. So yeah, it's, it's been amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's surprising that Sky News were interested in coming and finding out what's going on and I think they wanted to know why the freedom movement was still going strong after four years. So what are your thoughts on that? It's because we found our real tribe. You know, COVID was the giver, the giver. We, you know, we didn't know it at the time, but we all were searching for things straight away because we all thought, is it me? I'm a, am I the only one? So we all started going, finding things, looking online, hearing a little bit snippets of information. Going to, I went to, I started going off to Sheffield uh, to meet people I didn't know uh, just to see what was going on. And then I thought, oh my God, there are other people who think the same way as me. And uh, from then, gradually the networks have built, and the networks. A big helping hand with that has been um, the um, stand in the park and rebels and roundabouts, and we're all a big family now. You know, I mean, we're but importantly, we're a growing family. There's people here today, this weekend, that have come up from Plymouth, Bournemouth. Even Matt Letizier came from, from Southampton. <laughs> uh, do you think Sky News will portray us in a positive light? Uh, no. Absolutely not. Not a chance. Well. No. Um, even though he's a pleasant chap, um, I know that they, they've got they've got to get clicks, and they've got to have little um, their article, whatever they do, they have to get a certain number of people to click on it. And if they don't say something sensational, people won't click on it. And he almost admitted that in talk, talking to us over a period of time, you know, because uh, sometimes it was off camera and sometimes it was interview. And uh, yeah, I think they're pretty much driven by revenue and get you know advertising and stuff like that. And and if you just put something boring like people having a great time in a field in Cumbria that might not get too many clicks you know whereas uh, anti-vaxxers conspiracy theorists meet in a field in Cumbria they get a few more for that we've seen that with um, Cumbria Crack because Cumbria Crack has done three uh, I know of hit articles on us and then the cheeky gets actually asked us to uh, give them press passes on the day they did the third one so they, we didn't even answer it uh, which they, that's what exactly what they deserved and uh, they're obviously they had their normal um, then the normal articles are uh, five or ten people look at them and the ones we've had have been 800, 900, 1,000 and so obviously they, that's the, where the clickbait works, works so it worked for them even though it didn't you know we didn't particularly like it but what's the worst thing that Sky can say to anybody uh, to, to, to the public is uh, a whole bunch of anti-vaxxers but it might just get a glimmer of, of there are other people out there who are thinking alternatively because I think a lot of people are waking up to the knowing that the government up to no good and uh, you know with everything that they've been throwing at us for the last four years I think um, I think it could work out in our favor even though it might not look like it at first yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think with Sky, we had a, it was a big thing to, to let them come because we asked a lot of people and some wanted them to come and others didn't. But I found the people that didn't want them to come lived in a fear-based fear perspective. Um, and I don't know about Kev, but me personally, I just didn't want to act or react off the fear. So I tried to centre myself and it took probably about three weeks to eventually say yes after I'd said no, so a day later. Um, 
and it just for me I just thought you know what let them come what's the worst they can do if it if it gets something out there someone's just about to sort of wake awaken or you know just pushing that door open slightly then uh, we've we've cracked it we've, we've you know we're bringing in people into the tribe this is what it's all about yeah at the end of the day as the old saying goes any public publicity is good publicity Absolutely. Uh, interestingly i actually asked their journalist uh tom cheshire if he wanted to be interviewed and he declined oh did he that's interesting all yeah, right i wonder why that is <laughs> well did he give a reason um, well, initially he said that uh, he might have to put it through his editor and then he didn't want anything going out from us you know, from that interview Social before media. their stuff went out. Yeah. So I said, if you interview me, I'll give you my word. I won't put it out until um, until yours that. goes out. And then he declined that interview. So then after Do I did the camera work for Dolores, uh, speaking to them, I went up to him and I said, okay, you've de declined the interview with me, but the one that you've done with Dolores, I'm putting that out there. So I, I was up front with him and told him that. And it's hit the algorithm now and brilliant. it's flying. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Wait, how many clicks are you up to? Um, so on, so click, click bait, yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> on uh, Twitter at the moment, it's probably running about two and a half thousand, and the same on the YouTube channel. Brilliant. Whereas the YouTube channel would have probably had about a hundred views. Now it's had two and a half thousand. Brilliant. So, okay. That, yeah, brilliant. That's great. Thanks for interviewing. Thank us. you, guys. Thanks Thank for following you. us around yeah. for a couple of days. Cheers. Brilliant. No worries. Cheers, guys. Nice one. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers, Steve.